We know here in California that wildfires aren't a question of if, but a question of when. If you live in an area prone to wildfires, and so many of us do, the good news is there are some simple yet really significant steps you can take to prepare. Prepare yourself, your family, and your home. Daniel Gorman is a firefighter and a wild, wildfire research engineer. He joins us this morning with some actionable steps that each of us can take. Good morning to you. You're a busy guy, a firefighter and a wildfire researcher. Uh, glad to have you with us, Daniel. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, oftentimes I think so many of us feel the anxiety. We talk about this, it, it fronts our headlines. We talk about wildfire season, which, by the way, seems to extend beyond its typical calendar. And I think one of the ways that we can refute anxiety is sort of give it data and, and take action. And you've got some ideas about things that we can do um, in terms of like, you, there are ideas that you have for weekend projects that even not a handy person could manage. Yeah, I think so. And I'm a recent homeowner myself, and so I'm getting in the field of DIY home projects. And, and while I have a background in the technical stuff, um, I'm not a construction person, but I think I myself can do a lot of these. And even if okay. you can't, I think a lot of homeowners can identify them and find the help to do it. Okay, so let's run through them. You've got four different ones and an app, so that makes five. The first one is create a um, zero to five foot home ignition zone. What does that mean? Yeah, so this is really important. This is a keystone of what we know from the science and the research and what we see in the field in that it's the embers, those small hot burning particles that yeah. can travel ahead of the fire front that ignite things around the home or ignite the home directly. And so over my shoulder right here is a picture from the lab um, where I are in South Carolina. And essentially those embers land in the combustible mulch, which you might have in the mulch bed around your home, oh, about yeah. five feet and those flames could ignite the home. So what we wanna do is we wanna create that first five feet being the home ignition zone. Um, we wanna make it ember resistant and ideally have non-combustible. So like you said, it's not if the ember lands there, but when they do, they don't have anything to ignite. If you live in those fire prone areas, this is a key thing. You don't wanna give its uh, ammunition right up to and fuel right up to your, your house line. Okay, the roof, the roof is a big deal because again, those embers, if the wind picks them up, they can travel and land on your roof. Exactly. And not just the embers, but before the fire comes and even during the wind from the fire, the debris, the non-combusting, the pine needles, the leaves can land on your roof. They can accumulate there. And all those locations where debris accumulates, that's also where embers accumulate. And so what we know from the building science is that a class A fire rated roof is going to be the most fire resistant. If you're a homeowner, you can look up on your roof. If you have an asphalt shingle, you're in good shape. That's a class A roof. If you have a combustible like wood shingle roof, you really want to prioritize changing that. There's other roof coverings like tiles and metals. Um, those fall in, the, in between. But really importantly, recognizing that the roof is an important part of your home, um, making sure that's Class A fire rated, and if it's not, prioritizing changing that out. And for homeowners who are concerned about the look of your home, there's some actually really beautiful looking ones that are there and ones that will not, you know, the curve appeal of your house will not suffer by putting in some of this fire retardant material. Okay, you talked about the roof. Let's talk about the deck because I know growing up, our deck was kind of the place that spiders went to die. There, there was a lot of things under our deck. We didn't go under there very often, and that can be a concern. Yeah, and the underdeck area where just, again, debris can accumulate can also be used as a storage area. I know some of these higher elevated roofs under the deck can be a place where you store your kayak or maybe some oh, lumber sure. for other home structures projects. Sure. We want to keep that area clear of both debris and other types of fuels. Embers are likely to land there and underneath that deck creates the fire dynamics that can be really you know, hazardous to that deck. Attaching a combustible deck to your home is kind of like attaching a wick. So again, prioritizing that under deck area, making sure that's clear of debris and don't use that area to store um, other combustibles like your kayaks or other fuels. Oh yeah, good point. Okay, so we've done the roof, around the house, under the deck. This is interesting. I wouldn't have thought about the vent screen what do you want people to be aware of about vent screens? Yeah, so vents are an important part of homes, right? They sure. let air in and out. We need that circulation. Um, but they also create a pathway, essentially, for those embers, those burning particles, to enter into the home. Oh, and so nice. our research has found that eighth inch, smaller than quarter inch metal mesh, can do a better job of resisting embers from getting inside. But it's still not available. 
available that are both ember and flame resistant vents. Hmm. Um, the DIY project to replace the metal mesh if it's quarter inch with eight inch is a good option. Um, but if you're considering larger retro, retrofit uh, projects, consider actually investing in a both ember and flame resistant vent. And you can talk to the people at your uh, home improvement store about what that looks like and what options you have available. And then um, you've, you, there's a virtual app. Homeowners, this is a handy device. Tell us about this app. Yeah, so the app is uh, on all your smartphones, smart devices. Um, it's wildfire ready virtual app. It'll actually walk you through the suburban roadmap, which we spent a lot of time and, and years of research on. It has augmented reality and essentially acts as a checklist for all the things that we talked about today. A homeowner and homeowners in the community can use the app to walk through, to evaluate the vulnerabilities and have guidance on action items that they can take to be more resistant to wildfire. Daniel, let me ask you, what came first for you? Were you first a firefighter or, or first a wildfire research engineer? I was first a firefighter. I was riding on big red engines. I loved it. I got into research when I was in school and this combined the two worlds. And I imagine it helps inform you as a, as a firefighter, doesn't it? And have all that Absolutely. data and that knowledge and research behind you. Absolutely. You know, to have been in fires, to be on the fire line, to feel the heat, to see the embers. We recreate it in the lab and we do a really good job of it. But to have that field experience, I think, is a big strength. Of mine. Absolutely. And look, the research is helping us. I appreciate this. This is super helpful to us. Daniel Gorman, a firefighter and wildfire research engineer. Again, that app is the Wildfire Ready app. You can download it wherever you get your apps. Thanks for chatting with us, Daniel. We'll lean on you again. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Maria, those are really good tips. Uh, oh, 100%. I was listening. Yeah, we're so grateful for our firefighters and, of course,